What if I told you that labeling an emotion can actually change what emotion you're feeling? That is part of one of the leading theories of how emotions are formed. There are many theories that attempt to explain emotion, but one that has stood out recently as the most probable is the Schachter and Singer two-factor theory of emotion. Basically, the theory postulates that emotions happen due to two factors, physical arousal and cognitive labeling. First, we have to be physically aroused in some way, like walking down a scary bridge or seeing something shocking. The arousal leads to the second factor, which is labeling what we're feeling as an emotion, which is known as cognitive labeling. Schachter and Singer tested their two-factor theory with a dauntingly simple experiment. They injected study participants with epinephrine, also known as adrenaline. Epinephrine is a hormone that causes one's heart rate and blood pressure to increase and breathing to speed up. In essence, the epinephrine was meant to create the physical arousal necessary for an emotional reaction. Half of the participants were told what the side effects of epinephrine were. The other half were not told what the side effects were. The participants were then placed in a room with an actor pretending to be a participant. There were two types of actors in this experiment, one showing euphoria and the other showing anger. At the end of the experiment, the participants had to name their emotions. The participants, who knew what the side effects of epinephrine were, did not react to the actor's input, but the participants who did not know the side effects were more likely to become angry or happy based on what the actor was doing. The experiment was a success. Epinephrine gave the arousal while the actor, either angry or euphoric, offered a cognitive label for that arousal, generating a full emotional response in the participants that didn't already know what they were experiencing. A later study attempted to prove the two-factor theory of emotion wrong. This study separated male participants into two different groups and asked them to walk down a bridge. One group was assigned to an eerie and scary bridge, and the other one a pleasant and safe bridge. At the end of the bridges, a woman gave the men a questionnaire and a number to call if the participants wanted to ask a question. The study found that the men who walked across the scary bridge were much more likely to call or chat with the woman. They were also more likely to say things of a sexual nature. Interestingly, this meant that the study ended up doing the opposite of what it set out to do. Instead of disproving the two-factor theory, this study actually strengthened it. The men who walked down the scary bridge were more aroused, naturally, as anyone would be walking down a scary bridge, and upon seeing the woman, they cognitively labeled their arousal as sexual interest. This goes to show how powerful emotion is. We often think of things like arousal and cognitive labeling as separate from one another, but they are actually integral to generating an emotional reaction. There are many criticisms of this theory, but it's generally agreed upon that it is one of the best descriptions of the physical and cognitive factors that lead to emotion that we have to date. So that's how emotions work.